Welcome guys, welcome to PAX, welcome to Kingdom Come Deliverance and I'm so excited because again, I'm not alone, but I'm with the magnificent Victoria Hogan. Thank you very much for coming. I'm so happy to be here. Hi guys. And Hi. if you don't know who's Victoria Hogan, of course you know who's Victoria Hogan. She is the voice actress and, well, general actress, right, of Theresa. And who's Theresa, you ask? Well, guys and girls. It's your girlfriend from the game, you know, you meet her and date her and stuff, you remember. Now, Teresa, and this will be super exciting, you are getting your own DLC, right? So you yeah. will be the star of a woman slot, and that's the next DLC that's coming out. Yeah, it was so exciting. Like, yeah. When I heard that uh, Teresa was getting her own DLC, I was thrilled. Because it's fun to get to the chance to play it through the eyes of a female character. Yeah. It's a totally different world because of that than Henry's world. And it was it was a blast. It was a lot of hard work and it was a lot of fun. At the very least, people are not saying, welcome. Uh, it, oh, it's Henry. Nice to see you. They will say, oh, hi, Teresa. So at yeah. the very least, we have something. But yeah. we are at PAX East right now. And well, the some of the people play the band of busters. But we yeah. are the cool guys, right? We are the cool kids and we can play a woman slot. And you will play the woman's lock. Yeah. Or try to <laughs> survive try to. <laughs> in a in a terrible, cruel world of Kingdom Come. Tinker! It's Tinker! Ah! Yeah, and you All already right. spoiled what's the big thing in the next DLC. <laughs> of course it's you, of course, but Tinker. Uh, I'm allowed to say that, right? Of course, you can He's tell. My beloved hey, dog. I'm known for I know to be the one who's spilling the beans all the time, so it, it feels right. great that it's not me doing it this time. I know that we had no dog in the in the uh, motion capture, so yeah. Uh, how was it to act with an <laughs> invisible dog? So Teresa goes through a lot in this DLC. She has a lot of um, a lot happens to her. I'll say. Uh, it was a, it was hard to sh to shoot motion capture for it. The hardest part, absolutely, without a doubt, the dog. Yeah. That was the hardest part. So like we have here a dog who's running around. You can interact with him and talk to him, and Teresa can like talk, pet him and feed him and stuff. But all of that was just me doing it to thin air. So I was always like, "Come here, Tinker. I'm a good boy." <laughs> and they'd be like, "All right, Tinker's running across a field," and I'd be like, <laughs> "Just to, to nothing." And then in this, like, he he's somewhere. getting closer, he's yeah. running to you. So I'd just be like, Be more oh, excited, Tinka. come on. Oh, hello, boy. <laughs> so that was, that was really hard. So the DLC takes place, it's sort of a prequel to the main quest of the game. It's all of the events leading up to the attack on Scalitz, what happens during the attack, and what happens um, after Scalitz as well, but all told through the eyes of Teresa. Um, so she was right there in the action of it. So tell me then, who is Teresa, if you can answer that? I mean, we know Teresa, but who is she? Who, <laughs> who is, is she in her like, heart and her deep soul? Inside, yeah. Deep inside, yeah. Um, Teresa is a. She, I think she's a. She's a fighter, certainly, but she's a fierce defender. Like I would call Teresa the fierce defender of the game. When we're introduced to her, she's saving Henry. Um, she's loyal. She's protective, and she would truly do anything to protect and, and save the ones she loves. She's strong, she's funny, um, and she's incredibly kind and loving as well. Like, that's what I like, like so much. Like you are. Her. So we picked, exactly the ex like we, <laughs> we picked the right actor for that. But that's a good question though. So how, how much do you think you could add to Teresa's role? Like, I mean, you, you get a job, right? But then you are asked to give your own input somehow, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Do you? I think, um, I think what was fun exploring in Teresa was the idea that like she's not She's not a submissive woman who doesn't speak her mind. She says what's on her mind. She's practical in that she knows her place in, in this current society, but she's not afraid to talk back. She's not afraid to express her opinions. She's not afraid to challenge. And she's a little bit stubborn, which I, which I really like and respect in her. We were talking about it earlier, and you said a really, really funny thing. You, you called uh, the DLC or the, the things Teresa has to go through here like Teresa's super bad day or something like that. Teresa's very, very bad day. Yeah. Well, so yeah. can you say something about that? Why do you think that? We know with Teresa, she, when we meet her in the main quest of the game, a lot of her family has died, mm -hmm. but we don't know how or why. We know her house was destroyed. We know that she's living with her uncle, um, but she used to live somewhere else. And um, that's sort of how we're introduced to her. So during this DLC, we see a bit of her normal average day-to-day -day life and then we just see the complete overhaul of mm. that of that day we have the attack on her home we have her 
attempting to save the village and people around her, attempting to save her family members. The player, when he plays Kingdom Come, he knows that Henry is about to flee skeletons, right? And yeah. you see Teresa in the beginning when she's picking up the nails, and the next time you see her is when she's in trouble with some humans attacking their house, right? Yeah. And in this DLC, the player will finally, well, not only see what happened before the attack, so because someone had to order the, the nails, right? So Teresa's going up to the yeah. two skeletons, taking a look, eventually meeting Henry. This will be super weird. You, you yeah. see Henry from the other side. It's like you know yeah. a little secret. Teresa finally gets to sort of like uh, have a little bit of combat with Henry, which was a, which was really fun. You were living for a very long time in Prague, right? Yeah. How, what is a American actress <laughs> with who's supposed to play with a British accent, living in Prague, <laughs> making a game? How 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 is that going together? Making a game about European history. How how did that go together? I think it was just it was just complete, you know, fate. It was kind of an accident, really, because I was there. <laughs> you stumbled into a game, I and all of a and sudden, I fell into Warhorse yeah. Studios. It's like, yeah. oh, what do you do? Do you need? We well, do you have a job? Of course, come in, come in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was in Prague on vacation, on holiday. I was visiting a friend who lived there, and um, through uh, through someone who was on this video game who I met said, oh, you're an actress, you should come audition. They're having like these big open call auditions. They're looking for the main female character of the game. And I was like, oh, like, you know, what the, what the hell, why not? <laughs> and so I walked in and um, yeah, I got the part Is that after your, auditioning. Was that your first video game? Yeah, it was my very first video game. Was it completely different than you expected or did it meet your expectations? How was it? Well, and working with a bunch of nerds, of course. I love it, I love it, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I would say... Bad guys are coming. Humans, get him! It's like theater in that it's like you're using your imagination. You don't have to worry about where the camera is or anything because there are just a million cameras surrounding the room. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be really intimate and close because you're all mic'd up and you have the uh, motion capture suit and all the ping pong balls on it tracking all your movements. So you can really just focus on sort of being present there mm -hmm. with the other actors. Riding a horse that's actually just like a pole yes <laughs> or you're eating at, at a, a pub and it's actually just a pole or you're living in a house and walking through the house and doing chores and it's a pole <laughs> so it takes a lot of it takes a lot of imagination most of the scenes you did were with Tom McKay right the actor yeah. of Henry how did that work I had a lot of fun with Tom I think we were both really into like experimenting and trying new things we weren't afraid to improvise a lot like a lot of the scenes are just us sort of riffing and like making stuff up as we go mm -hmm. um, and actually I think that I think that Tom's first cutscene he did was with with me so we were sort of like just starting together I had never done motion capture before so we were kind of figuring it out together and like we'd be acting and our velcro would get stuck together and we'd have to stop and figure it out <laughs> you know that Henry and Teresa they're kind of like getting together and stuff yeah. right and then they also kiss and stuff did you also have to motion capture that, or is that something we had to do? <laughs> um, so Tom and I did. So Tom and I did kiss the first few times. <laughs> but the problem is, is that when you have the I don't know what they're called. I call them ping pong balls. What are <laughs> they the called? reflectors, I think. Is that so, what they're called? Reflectors. Yes, I think so. Motion capture ping pong ping pong balls. Let's go by I that. I believe the technical term is ping pong. Ping balls. ball. Ping ball. Yeah. So when we actually would get like close and. Um, when we would really kiss, our ping pong balls would interact with each other and the, we would so the, become the, one on the motion capture Even screen. the ping pong balls kissed. You can, watch, you can watch the monitor, so when you're moving around you can see like a, the rough outline of your character moving around too. And they would get all distorted and weird. And so finally we had to just, we would like pretend to kiss but the, like six inches apart from each other. Still we are at PAX East and we are showcasing a very work in progress build. There are bugs of course. Not saying that KCD, everyone knows there are no bugs at all, so it's a work in progress build. <laughs> uh, there's no voiceover, so maybe we True. can try to get some British lines, Teresa lines out of you. Yeah, let's do let's, it. Let's see if I, when I push you pick the a, saddest. You pick the saddest scene to do it to. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? These bandages are soaked through with blood. I have to change them and I should get something, some marigold at least, so the wounds don't get infected. Water for cleaning. Matthew said there should be some in the mines somewhere. Do you 
hear them cheering, they cheer because of you. <laughs> I love I love Teresa. I love playing her. It's one of my favorite things I've ever done. Honest to God, it really is. People were asking for a female player. It was a Kickstarter um, promise, so that's why we said we have to put it in there. Because, not only because we have to, but also because we want to, of course. But it's pretty cool to play as her because she is by that point already way more mature than Henry I would say from the yeah. way how she talks from the way how she has to behave how she has to go through the the, the world of Kingdom Come mm -hmm. and I think that's pretty cool to me the most interesting parts of her character is that she'll do what she needs to do to defend herself and to protect the people around her but ultimately she is merciful you know ultimately she has a, a really strong set of moral values she won't compromise them that's, that's a very good point, because I think that Henry is more this kind of little bit spoiled brat, at least in the very beginning. <laughs> Teresa learns from Henry that you can sort of depend on someone, you can turn to someone for companionship. Like, you don't have to carry the weight of the world on your shoulders all by yourself. One of my favorite scenes to shoot in this DLC, and also, ge and also actually genuinely the hardest, and was a scene with Tinker. And oh yeah, now that's a super I'm, sad thing. It, it, it was rough. I, I looked at the director and I was like, how dare you? You devils. How dare you? And it was one of the only times where we were in the motion capture studio and we finished the scene and the director was like, are, are you okay? Like, can we keep filming? And I was like, yes. I hate you and I don't want to see you again. You think that Tinker is male or female name? Well, because I have actually no idea. We can figure out pretty quickly if Tinker is a male or female. In this well, <laughs> that's a very good point. So Tinker, I'm very sorry. No, come back. What do you think? Is it male? Tinker's a boy, yeah. Good. You cannot pet your dog. However, I figured a way. If you crouch and go close <laughs> to Tinker and then move like this, isn't that good enough? That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? He loves it. He just... <laughs> that's, that's good enough. But what yeah. you can do is actually tell him that he's a good boy. You can feed him, you can praise him. Teresa will have her own map, kind of. So it of course still takes place on the Kingdom Come Deliverance map. There's no additional regions. However, we cut out the skulls and its outskirts. The player will revisit these places as Teresa. Keep in mind that in the base game, there's no big reason for you to go to this area again after you uh, buried your parents. So the player or you guys will get something older kind of, but with new quests around it. So you can dress her, though there's no cross-dressing here, so you cannot like take full plate armor like those guys here behind us. You are wearing the stuff she would wear. However, you can equip weapons. Bows are probably the most powerful weapon for her, or the dagger. The dog itself has its own tab, same like the horse has in your inventory, and Henry will have its own dog. The DLC comes with a big ass collector's edition so that's something you should also keep in mind so if you are new to Kingdom Come Deliverance or that said I was waiting for the last DLC so that I can get all, all together the collector's edition is there for you it's called Royal Edition so go get it get all the DLCs the Teresa one will be the coolest one that's actually the one I was looking uh, forward to most me too yeah of course Imagine that, <laughs> but there will be more of course, so uh, Teresa is one big important part of the game, though does Johanka ring a bell? If not, take a look who she is and uh, Henry and Johanka will have a very big and important quest time together that, well, shows how, the middle, how cruel the Middle Ages could be and how some people were judging and, well, Henry has a very, very big impact and his decision might decide of the fate of some people in this world. So I think that's everything important uh, about the DLC. One of the questions I get asked the most is why won't Teresa talk to me anymore? Like, Teresa and I have been dating and she won't talk to me anymore. Oh, yeah. Mm. And I am, can I, I'm here to say as, as a spoiler, or Go not, for it. Know? Go for it. No, they, no one knows. Now they will. <laughs> You can continue to talk to Teresa. Dating app. There's I, what, what you don't know, eventually you know, there's like so many dating apps here, new game things, stuff. We have our own. It's called Tinka instead of Tinder. She is very Teresa. Or Teresa is very Victoria. So One of us, that's yeah. a very philosophical question. Who 
is she and who am I? Let's think about that. See you at the woman's lot. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thank you.